So what's your name, sir? My name is Bob Fleck, and I'm from Burlington, Ontario. You're, so you're a Canadian? I am a Canadian, and I'm a professional video maker. You are? Yeah. And what are you doing with a camera that doesn't look like a big monster, and I got the monster? Well, this is one of three cameras that I have. Okay. This is the Sony A6000, and I have a, a Sony VG30, and I have a Sony EA50, and they all have exact same sensor, which is an APS-C sensor. Okay. So they all take video, and they all take stills. Really? So it's a question of what form factor you want to be using at any given time. Right. So this will do exquisite video. Mm -hmm. It's not 4K, mm -hmm. but it's very good. Right. And uh, so, but I'm using this principally as a still camera. That's my interest. Right. And it here. So I love coming out this time of night, right? Because it's very pretty light. It's very soft and things are balanced and you get more detail in the shadows. And what, what kind of videos do you make in, in Toronto? I make, I make videos for nonprofits. Okay. To help them create awareness and fundraise and recruit and stuff like that. Now, did I misspeak and say, is, are you from Toronto? From Burlington, which is in Ontario. Okay. About 40 miles from Toronto. Got it. And, in uh, what direction? And which, uh, in what direction from this Toronto? This way, uh, west. Okay. West of Toronto. Okay. So toward Chautauqua. So it's a, about a two and a half hour drive for us to come down here. Right. We've been coming here for 17 years. Right. And this is heaven on earth as far as we're concerned. Now I've heard people say there is a citadel just this side of Niagara on the lake. Yes. In which many Canadians cannot get through. And so we've, we've had things like the Massey Organ, which was downloaded by a yeah. Canadian family, but we don't get enough good folks from Toronto. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, there are a fair number of Canadians come, but I guess more of them should come. We, we should probably be promoting it more in, right. in Canada because there's nothing like this anywhere, let yeah. alone, no. you know, from Toronto's three hours, it's nothing. And, and most Canadians I've met would share the values of Chautauqua. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. say, you're interested in the arts, Yes. Stopping having it. a discussion like you and I are all sharing ideas. Yes, without absolutely. Any, without any hesitation. No, we love coming here. We come, we have a little condo here, and uh, and so my wife gets here about three weeks a year, and I get maybe two, one and a half or two. Right. Now, is your video making a first job, or is this a retirement job? Or well, I've been a filmmaker for about 54 years. Now. You have. Yeah. So I was in television commercials for many, many years. Okay and then uh, into corporate videos and things of that kind, and then uh, around 2000 switched to nonprofits. Okay. So I've done about 130 videos for nonprofits at uh, little or no cost to them. Great. Which is, uh, it's fun, it's very interesting. Great. And I was here interviewing Joan Brown Campbell actually on Tuesday for a compassion video that we're doing. So Joan Brown Campbell was head of religion here for 14 okay. years. She Tell me about your compassion video. Well, <coughs> I'm getting to talk to a lot of people. Uh, this is sponsored by a gentleman in uh, Canada who was uh, COO of BlackBerry. Okay. And uh, so he's sponsoring this uh, enterprise, and we've been all over the U.S. I've been to San Antonio, to Albuquerque, uh, New York. And, and uh, I was just out to Portland, Oregon, on a project for grieving children. Okay. Lost uh, loved one. You know, right. So that's the sort of thing I'm involved. Right, right. Anyway, it's nice to meet you and Terrific. to run into you and your 4K. Okay. I'm with Book of Shibiyan, right. so we're, we're really? hot. Now, John, it's John. Right? Correct. Yes, now, John, what brings you to Chautauqua? I'm a lifelong Chautauquan. My first visit to Chautauqua was in utero. My father took pictures of me in a stroller in front of the old St. Elmo Hotel. Wow. Our first Chautauqua cottage was purchased in 1945, four years before my arrival. Now, are you going to tell me how long ago this was, John, or not? Well, I'm a 1949 model. Okay. And <laughs> and I turned 65 the end of this month. I don't know how that happened. Ah. But in this incarnation, I'm out teaching college psychology. I am uh, making videos only if it's fun. I'm a bit of a techie, so I had to be one of these people to get a 4K camera. Yes. And yes. Um, I, I kind of laugh at it. The best video demonstrating this camera was not made by... Sony. It was made by a gentleman who appears to be a Toronto native, and, and he shows some scenes from Toronto, scenes from Niagara on the lake. Uh -huh. and, get, and I think he's been in a warm climate in, in the Caribbean or Mexico or something. Came out this winter. 
So I'm very delighted to run into a Canadian and uh, share it. My family spent about one generation on my mother's side in, in Hamilton, Ontario. Really? So, so we always say a little sympathetic to, to Canadians. Well, Burlington is right, right on the edge of Hamilton. Right. So that's the... That right. And she, she died before my time, so I, yes. I'm i not able to sit there and, and really go for the details. Yes. The year you arrived, the year you departed. Yes, what I know was what your, that's what like. your family life like? I can't do that. And your work has taken you even as far as Cuba, right? I've, I've been to Cuba, and, and um, I shot another National Geographic expedition this spring. Um, it was, was fun. Actually, I went to Europe with students. And we were for two and a half weeks looking at sites for academic psychology. Went to Paris, Würzburg, um, Leipzig, Bayreuth, Vienna. I put the students on a plane in Vienna and sent them home. I got on another plane, went to London, and did the National Geographic Didi Expedition, mm -hmm. which was delightful to go to north of uh, uh, London to uh, Bletchley, where they did the Sigils uh, intelligence analysis then to uh, into London itself to the war headquarters and to, to a cruiser in the, in the river uh, down south to Portsmouth so a couple of museums uh, the location in, inside a British secure military facility where Ike made it just, just crossed the channel in a thoroughly inauthentic situation the channel was perfectly still looked like Lake Chautauqua on a windless day in a six floor six story uh, fancy ferry walked the beaches did a couple of museums there, went to a British, an American, and, and a German cemetery, and then finished hearing two presidential addresses while we sat in the American cemetery there, um, with yeah. a sea of crosses on both sides. I'm going to so change the frame a little bit, John. Yeah, by all means. And so so the big project is this. I hope to go back to Cuba, and I need uh, to... I'm going to get this I'm going to stop for just a minute. left this turning so yeah now have you used the camera this uh, talent you have in association with your class I have some in the last the previous trip we had this with students um, at Campbell University I, I shot as much as I possibly could ended up putting eight hours of video on our web page uh -huh. and, and and as a faith-based institution it was terrific to do a walkthrough of uh, Martin Luther's museum Lutherland, as, as well as the academic sites. Uh, when we are a small university, and before when we tried to get students to go to Europe, it took us two years to solicit enough students. With this material out there, we were able to, to get enough to go the first time at that. So to me, that says the trip was worthwhile. Now, where, is, where is Campbell? University? Campbell is midway between, it's in North Carolina, midway between Fayetteville and Raleigh. It's a little town called Bowie's Creek. Yeah. The university's probably focus is more on the state. We do have a medical school, a law school, and a pharmacy school. We're very proud to look at the academic success of our graduates. Our lawyers have the highest pass rate in the bar exam of any law school in the state for the past 10 years. Only once when we haven't been successful with that. We came in second behind Duke, and our pharmacy students are, are the only ones with a 100% pass rate on the national exam. We've wow. done it twice, and nobody else has done it zero times. How many students do you have? We have um, about... 5,000 students, and our freshman class will be the class of 2018. Looks like it's just over 1,000. So we're very happy about that. So it's a vibrant university, you would say? say I think it's, it's a fine place, absolutely fine. Yeah. And then keeps to its values and does good things. Okay. All right. Got That's what you it. want, you think? That's it. So good. We're done. So, well. Seven years? <laughs> yeah. So you came here as a baby? Yeah, uh, pretty much. My parents were really interested in Chautauqua. Um, my dad like really liked to walk here. Uh -huh. um, I went
went to Boys and Girls Club for 15 years, and then I pretended to be 15 another year so I could keep going. Right. So uh, all of my best friends and I stay in contact. We all met at Boys and Girls Club. You did. Um, and it's really funny because I just saw my best my best friend's parents saw me here doing portraits in the park for free mm -hmm. and they stopped and took a picture of me because she's she knows what I've been up to lately right and she knows that um, I actually I'm working now as an artist and I told her recently like hey Lorna I've been doing portraits of people in Chautauqua again remember when I was 14 and I used to draw portraits in the park yeah she was like oh Shelly that's so cool I'm so glad well now she has p proof that I'm that I'm doing that. Right. It was very. It was a very serendipitous encounter. It really was. They took a picture of me, and I was in the process of drawing these two young choir students. So it was really funny. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is uh, three scoops of ice cream. It's gluten free at the Saint Saint Elmo. No. Saint, yeah. Food for thought. Oh. Okay. Go down and the stairs. Yeah, down the stairs. Mm -hmm. You have to order it in store. Right. and they'll make it for you right and they didn't have cotton candy today that's my favorite but right. they had butter pecan and they had a bunch of other flavors and i was happy to find out that many of them are gluten free yeah so you have a gluten allergy i do uh -huh. we only recently learned about it okay. so when she came as a kid she didn't know mm -hmm. you walk around with a stomach ache then yeah yeah it's pretty it's a pretty rough allergy you have to really watch what you eat but you can eat lots and lots of ice cream. Great. So that's good. That's great. <laughs> and where to, what has the best ice cream here at Chautauqua? Um, I, I think I think the I like food for thoughts ice cream. I really. Yeah. I I mean I I don't think they have gluten free options over at the Brick Walk. It used to be the refectory. Right. Back in the day. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Do so you remember it as that? And Sadie J's. We used to have Sadie J's and. Uh huh. I remember sitting on the roof of Sadie J's eating a Chautauqua Mel and or getting a tuna pita with chips and those gigantic muffins that they used to have. Yep. Yep. And then the other great place to go was always the Yak because they had one dollar grilled cheeses. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. It was like when you're a little kid you can get a whole sandwich for a dollar and that was awesome. Yeah. Your, your parents sent you down there for when they wanted to get the house quiet. <laughs> so here's a dollar, go get yourself a sandwich. And mm -hmm. Well, I, when I was little, I had like an entire run of the place because I just rode my bike everywhere right. and it was really, really wonderful. Uh -huh. I, I have fond memories. I, I taught Cody about the tram. Mm -hmm. This is actually my first year here. I haven't been up here before and she's teaching me the ropes and it's a lot of fun and it's really cool. So are you a Jamestown guy? Or? Yes, I am, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do during the year when you're not here at Chautauqua? Oh. What do I do or what is both of you? Um, I'm, I'm a professional artist. Uh -huh. um, I've, I've been, I'm actually, I'm kind of like classically trained. Yeah. Way, so I went to art school. Okay. Um, I want to live in Italy uh -huh. or France or someplace. Because uh -huh. I think like it'd be nice to have more of a, to have more of a, an art influence all around me, right? Instead of instead of needing to always go to a gallery. Mm -hmm. But so I've I just started my art business four months ago, and I've already sold about twenty of my paintings. Wonderful. And I I keep getting more and more commissions, and uh -huh. I I haven't had to work in any other job, so right. it's been really great. I used to own Shelley's at the Point in Bemis Point. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And we had, I was like 19 and we had a little gallery. And so I'm just doing art stuff and trying to figure out how to how to make it work as an artist. But you're making enough to buy ice cream. Yes, I am. Okay. And to buy my boyfriend ice cream too. Great. Where'd, where'd you go to art school? <laughs> I went to SUNY Fredonia. Okay, close mm -hmm. by. Yeah, it was a good degree. Good. Oh, um, you should show him the, the painting or the drawing you learned how to make today. <laughs> I'm teaching him how to do everything that I know how to do. Uh huh. Starting today, this is my first lesson. This is the first time he's ever drawn a face. Really? I'm going to show you or I'm going to show the camera. Ooh, that's great. 
Not really, but oh. for a first draft sure. ever. Yeah. <laughs> the first one, first one is really good. You got all the por proportions down. Uh -huh. The eyes are a little big, but the hair's in the right place, mouth's in the right place. So right. our next lesson, he's going to learn more about shading and how to get, how to, and he's going to do a lot of, um, I'm going to make him draw from life and stuff, so he's going to get more. I'm hoping he'll be up to speed in about a week. Great. I'm the boyfriend, but I'm also the apprentice. Okay, that's okay. If you know your place. Yes, <laughs> 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 Yep. So you'll be back to Chautauqua with him, sir. She, we always have, don't even ask her the question. <laughs> oh, I'll just look this way. I'll, I'll find something else to distract me. This was always a good time to be out in the um, Esther Plaza, too. Mm -hmm. If you're an artist, you know the light, the mm -hmm. soft light this time, of, this time of day. Oh, yeah. And it's fun to see kids out playing on the fountain. Mm -hmm. Have a good old time about it. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. We just did a tour on the tram. The tour guide um, talked about all of the houses, and I I learned a lot that I actually didn't really know really? about the the architecture and the different and the different people here. And um, something else I didn't know is that the that building there, the Opera House, is only it only performs one show a year. Norton Hall. Norton Hall. <laughs> I didn't know that, so that was kind of interesting to me because I had a friend who, who worked for that for the opera company, so that was kind of cool. They used to have more shows in there, and opera is very expensive to put on; it doesn't sell very well. Okay. And so they reduced the number of shows. Now, now they do one in the amp. Okay. And it's the smart people, and I count myself among them, say, "Yeah, prepare two operas." People tend to turn over. We don't have a lot of people to come and save the season. Mm -hmm. So do the opera twice in July, do the opera twice in August. Oh, definitely. But two operas, one twenty in July, one each in August. Get out of that building completely. Mm -hmm. You can turn and find some post-opera use for it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and when they have lectures, there's not enough space, but they, they've got a capture on a television, mm -hmm. and that should be also shown down in the office, down in Norton Hall. Big screen. State-of-the-art oh, cool. kind of jumbotron screen. Oh, definitely. Right in the front there. Really cool. So we need we need you to sell some sell a lot of paintings for a high price to give us the money to do it. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. I can raise my prices. Yeah. I can be persuaded. So have you have you traveled to see any art museums that are particularly significant? Um, I've been to Paris. Um, I've been to the Louvre. Um, the Mona Lisa is really pathetic. <laughs> it's small. <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. It's uh. I've been to the Met. I've been to um, I've been to Albright Knox. I've been to a lot of really impressive smaller galleries too. Um, I think I've been to Soho. I I used to do a lot of traveling when I was a kid because because my parents had friends just all over. So we yeah. we used to go to New York about twice a year, yeah. three times a year. We yeah. used to go to Florida about once or twice a year. I'm not a New York City person, but I've, I've been to two very good European areas for art. London, go to New Tate. Oh, yes, I think I've been there. Okay, mm -hmm. there's the old power plant building. Mm -hmm. You walk out with the Millennium Bridge right across. Mm -hmm. And Vienna, um, Leopold is there. Okay, that would probably be gotta, pretty cool. Got to go to <laughs> Leopold. There's, there's a series of museums there. Leopold is, is a little more cutting edge. Mm -hmm. and then there's, there's a little more state modern art museum at the other end of this quad you got to see, okay. and then some some state stuff with 15th century with with gold frames. Mm -hmm. That doesn't doesn't get my juices going. <laughs> <laughs> but but 21st century, 20th century, mm -hmm. and um, that's a lot of museum. Leopold the top has an exhibit that's significant like that. That's really cool. Other yeah, I really want to start traveling abroad more because. I think the appreciation for art is kind of it's higher. declining a little bit in this country. Yeah. Too, much, too much mass produced stuff to buy at Walmart. Right. Well, and I think that's why I'm doing well right now is because people don't know where to get art. Yeah. And a lot of my friends are artists and they won't sell their work because they were they were they had it ingrained in, ingrained in them in art school or growing up that art isn't about making money and stuff. So so they're not they're not doing it professionally, which means they don't have the time to really pursue it because they have to work. Yeah. And then, 
And then people have to buy their stuff at Walmart or TJ Maxx or Michaels or wherever. So I, I feel like I have very little competition <laughs> in this area, but maybe that's maybe that's just because uh, I don't know. Maybe that's just because I most of my friends are out of town and I don't really know exactly what they're up to. <laughs> right. Right. Well, terrific. So what what are most of your common subjects? For our, your, um, a lot of people have me do family members or their children. When I was working in Bemis, I used to do a lot of portraits of young girls in the park. And I'd, I'd actually collect them and it'd be like a babysitting day. They'd come and I'd dress them up and take a, take like a photo shoot and then draw their painting. And usually the painting would take me about a day or two. And some people, I mean... I've, I try, I've developed the ability to be pretty diverse, so people have me do a lot of different things. They'll, they'll describe it for me. Mm -hmm. They'll describe exactly what they want, and then they'll, I'll just make something that fits their description. Mm -hmm. So I've done a peacock, and I've done a lot of more modern stuff that I wasn't really expecting to do. And it just depends on the client. You really, you really are have to like kind of leave control at the door because you are trying to please your customer and make something that they you're kind of trying to create their vision you're not really working for yourself yeah so it's like any other job really i mean you have your you you, you do have a boss and it's it's your customer mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. making people happy it's a lot of fun i really like it that's a good deal Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, she does specialize in portraiture and scenes of the lake. Mm -hmm. So if I were to say, give me a picture to put above my mantle, <laughs> that's the best experience of Chautauqua. Oh my goodness, that's not, a tough one. And not just not just like one state lake, lake scene, but there's so much going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the best... Kids playing here, the music, our students up there. I think the best experience of Chautauqua... It's like walking down the street and just some strange family, some a bunch of strangers sitting on a porch, uh -huh. drinking wine, going, hey, hey, come over, come have some wine with us. Yeah. That's probably what I would, like a bunch of people sitting around a table drinking wine and strangers being like, okay, yeah, yeah. we'll come over, we'll come have some wine with you. Uh -huh. That's a, That's probably the best experience that you're going to have here because right. it's I mean, where else is that going to happen? It doesn't happen any place. Yeah. It doesn't happen any place but Chautauqua. <laughs> oh, great. I'm going to give you a card. So you got my name. Okay, cool. And send me an email, and maybe I'll hire you to make a. Over. Maybe I'll hire you to make a picture for me. Oh,